Hello everyone, welcome back to Technology Moments, my name is Alan and here yet another video dedicated to high-speed fiber networks. We're gonna be seeing today and testing some bidirectional SFP Plus modules, we're gonna see how they work in a moment, particularly this model and brand, which are built for 10 gigabit per second as they are SFP Plus transceivers. And many may be saying already, hey Alan, 10 gigabit per second is not really considered a high-speed network anymore, and you may be right depending of course on where you're planning on running such networks. We've already discussed how optic fiber has great advantages when deploying LANs and wide area networks spanning over many kilometers, not only for being immune to electromagnetic interference and crosstalk, but also for the reach and protection against lightning or electronic discharges. We've also talked about in previous videos how 25 gigabit ethernet had been the fastest growing ethernet standard since gigabit ethernet. So there are a lot of people predicting that we're gonna be jumping from one to 25 gigabit per second local area networks. And even we may be jumping to 50 or 100 gigabit per second. By the way, so may grow internet access in an astonishing way. These 25 to 100 gigabit per second networks may share a lot of hardware as we've seen in our channel particularly one technology that is going to be discussed in this video, which is called data multiplexing, which actually lets us use one single optic fiber cable to transmit several or many data channels. It just happens in different wavelengths. This is applicable to absolutely all optic fiber cables out there. We're going to be talking particularly about these SFP plus bidirectional transceivers. These are SFP plus again, 10 gigabit per second and long range. But of course, you can get the same technology for SFP modules with many power output configurations suitable also for tens of kilometers or just a few hundred meters from an equipment room to your servers. We've already analyzed how transceivers have improved so much networking and also advantages that fiber optics has over copper. However, it also has the one big drawback, particularly for companies with tight budgets, and is its price. Here is where these bidirectional SFP Plus modules, or any SFP modules, may be a game changer now that they are widely available. Any optic fiber run that is now serving three clients or connections to other rack or switches can now serve six. Normally for small and medium sized companies, we would use modules that use one optic cable to transmit and the other one to receive, which brings up a very common sense remark. Isn't that a waste of fiber? The short answer is yes. That is the reason why many years ago these transceivers started to make their way in big networks, but it is now that they are widely available in many modules with various technical specs and most importantly at lower prices. Multiplexing technology is that which lets us use the same media cable to send information or digital data at different wavelengths. It couldn't be better explained than what you see in this graph. This poses an extraordinary advantage that has been in use for many years, for example, at optical terminals for internet access for home and business users, but also lets bigger infrastructures use devices as these where many concurrent connections can use a single optic cord to communicate thanks to the simple fact that data is transmitted and received, as we said, in different wavelengths. They use and share the same media for sending and receiving simultaneously many trunks, and for example, not being in the same network. It may very well be worth the investment in these devices. These concurrent connections in this particular example, without having to implement, in this case, 100 gigabit per second trunk switches, as, as a whole, they're gonna be using 80 gigabit per second bandwidth in either direction or even simultaneously using one single optic fiber core, but none of them surpassing 20 gigabit per second each. At the very least, at our companies or even for enthusiasts in their homes or small offices, we can cut fiber expenses in half just by implementing bidirectional SFP modules. And you could literally double the infrastructure capacity instantly using the same fiber run for two different channels, terminals, servers, or NAS. And we did so the Flintstones way and found out it could not be actually easier. If you, for example, have a fiber splicer and the time to change the LT terminals, you can choose to do it. But this way works as you are not affecting the locking mechanism nor the polishing of the LT terminal. You might also say, hey Alan, doesn't that mean that you need to change all the transceivers? The answer is not necessarily. And you have to compare the investment with the necessary fiber cable layout of many kilometers, which may cost tens of thousands of dollars for a medium sized campus. If you just need to very quickly solve a bottleneck in your infrastructure in terms of fiber optic cable runs, 
this may be the way to go. You can even implement these solutions just for your network backbone. If you're gonna change SFP modules, which may vary in price, to have this advantage for fiber optic runs of just a few hundred feet, it may be more expensive to change these transceivers than just to lay more cable. You're gonna have to be the one to decide this. It also depends on the quality of your supplier. But again, wouldn't all this be optimizing your resources? We could use those other SFP modules for shorter distances and instantly duplicate capacity of what we already have in place. These SFP Plus modules are branded QSFP Tech. We're gonna leave you the links in the description and can manage up to 10 gigabit per second full duplex. Internally, they separate signals and work as any other SFP module. Aspects to consider for implementing these? As you may know, there is a concept known as upstream or downstream or uplink downlink if you want. In networking, upstream refers to the connection from any network client to the server or maybe the gateway, which very often is close in terms of jumps to the servers. When deploying these transceivers, always keep in mind that you cannot place them indifferently. Think always about upstream and downstream. That is the reason why they come in colors and they are labeled differently. It is very important to deploy them with a standard printed guide in your organization. Try to buy the same brand or a maximum of two brands. So all of them are gonna be sharing the same wavelength and coding colors. This way, you can exchange them easily. Switches downstream are gonna transmit with the specified module, and if you make the mistake of connecting the same colored modules, you will not get a link and might get confused. Typically, it has been chosen that SFP modules are gonna transmit upstream in the shorter wavelength, but there isn't any technical reason why you should do that. It is not like one of them is gonna have a stronger signal being sent. The importance of doing this is basically organization and understanding that if you're gonna send information in one direction, the other end of the cable run is gonna understand the signal being received. As we said, we use this particular brand and modules which are SFP Plus for 10 gigabit per second links that work at this wavelength for transmission and this one for reception. We use them in these unified switches and as of cards, we use these LR Link 25 gigabit per second cards and both worked without a flaw. Even though they are stated to work only for Cisco equipment, they work with most equipment we connected them to. Normally you wouldn't have much trouble with that, but in some cases there may be missing information regarding sensors and activity of the transceiver. This data you find at your switch or router's interface. As always, and even with 10 gigabit per second speeds, are limited by external factors, uh, in our case, for example, the capacity of the distributed drives that can only be really tested when simultaneously storing at different fast locations in the servers or NAS. We also saw this with 25 gigabit per second ethernet. Even 10 gigabit per second links continue to be a huge upgrade for most. We have liked the experience with these modules very much and how simple it makes connecting fiber through tight spaces, dealing with limited budgets, or as we said, duplicating the capacity of the optic fiber runs in our premises. We really hope that you liked this video and especially hope that it was of great help if you wanted to know how these bidirectional transceivers work, if they may be of help for your company, or if you're in the decision-making process of buying new infrastructure for your network. Remember that you incredibly support us by liking our videos and subscribing to our channel so we can keep bringing all this content to you. See you next time.